What's up, guys? Welcome back. Welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we are back with the E91 M3. And I'm not going to lie, guys. I am super stoked to finally get this thing started. And when I finally say this, I mean legit. Maybe we got it started the other video and it started up no problem, which was super weird. And it ran for a little bit of time. I'm pretty sure I got that on video. And then all of a sudden, it just didn't want to start anymore. So we ran the codes. We plugged in everything else. We did everything else we needed to do. And then unfortunately, it still didn't want to start. So after running the codes, we found out that it had to do with the throttle actuators. The infamous issue with the E91 M3. And what I mean by infamous for the E91 M3, I primarily mean the S65 engines. I mean, unfortunately, S65s, you have two major issues. Throttle actuators and rod bearings. So unfortunately, in this case, our throttle actuators went bad, which means that I really don't trust anything else at this point. So I think we need to do raw bearings ASAP as soon as we get this thing pretty much running and driving. I'm probably gonna hit up my boys at SSR Performance and see if they can actually get this thing uh, sorted out in terms of the raw bearings. I'm pretty sure I should at least run. It should be, everything's like gravy in the Navy. We're just not gonna step on it or go hard on this thing until the raw bearings are done on this car. But hopefully, hopefully guys, the throttle actuators are actually gonna fix this thing. So I actually went to FCP Euro to overnight these throttle actuators. We got brand new bolts over here, brand new arms, two brand new throttle actuators. I could have just ordered one, but I decided you know what this is a build when i say i plan to keep it i plan to keep it i want to start some kind of cool collection and you know there's no better way to start than an e91 m3 because how sick is this and i decided if you're just gonna replace one of the throttle actuators there's no point because there's always a chance the other one might go out just because of the first one going out you know I mean, the, the, pretty much the same thing. So there's a possibility the other ones are ticking time bomb. So I decided to bite the bullet. It is about $1,400 for two throttle actuators, but with lifetime warranty, I mean, I just couldn't say no to that. Plus this is an OE brand and it's cheaper than OEM. So uh, I mean, it, it's pretty much the same thing. It is the same thing. <laughs> See, I'm really hoping this is gonna fix our issue. If it doesn't fix our issue, at least now we have brand new throttle actuators. But if, if, if it does fix our issue, that is a huge win. Now, another thing I ended up picking up and it's not from FCP Euro is actually some brake sensors. Now FCP Euro, when it comes to anything major i do go with them even my oil i go with fcp euro but in terms of these brake sensors i mean i got a three pack which this car needs three of them um for i think like six dollars on ebay i mean it's just the sensor with like two wires it's probably the least sophisticated sensor on this car so i decided you know what just go on ebay six dollars free shipping um you can't really lose but yeah i don't really care about that right now because the car doesn't drive let's go ahead and install these throttle actuators this is where we left off we need to go ahead and actually move this bad boy and uh just start moving this thing out of the way throttle actuators are actually really easy to get to once you get off the intake the engine plenum right underneath that you're gonna see two bolts over here i believe there's like two more bolts back there two more right there so like six bolts in total this thing pretty much just gets lifted up there's a couple bolts holding the throttle actuators down unplug those two connectors and they should theoretically just come out so it's pretty easy from what i've seen on videos let's hope to god it's actually that easy So the easiest way I found to do throttle actuators is to literally just kind of pry this whole like wiring thing upwards a little bit. And then uh, now we actually have access to actually get these things out. I mean, I, mean, I hope I can get them out, uh, but at least now I know I have access to them. You just have to disconnect them right over here. And I can see the bolts that are holding it down. Let's just hope to God we don't drop any bolts and let's just hope to God we get these actuators out. All right, guys, so I think I found out the issue. There's actually like a bunch of like silicone on top of the two screws over here. So that basically means that this actuator was probably replaced or at least removed for testing. Um, so yeah, that leads me to believe uh, this is bad. So let me go ahead and just pull this one out. Well, when I say it like that, I mean, I hope to God I can pull it out. So when I tried to, when I pulled the second screw out, you guys can see this screw was stuck on here and I don't know what they did and why they did this. Maybe that's the reason for it. Maybe they actually put that gunk, they actually put the screw in there, um, but definitely, Definitely, this is not OEM and it was definitely messed with at one point. I could be tripping, but this is the one I just pulled out and this one looks brand spanking new. So I don't know, it could be that the fact that they actually replaced this one and the other one was the one that just went out. It's a possibility. So now that we got both throttle actuators out of the car, you guys can see over here, this is how they are when they are sitting down. This sticker looks brand spanking new, but I could be wrong. So I do need to do some research and see if this part number is like a newer part number or something because they do have like these bottom numbers a little bit different. I don't know if that means 2017, no idea. Honestly, no. I 
how they got that because that's just, that would be 2015 now. I have no idea, but both of them right back here. I don't know if that's the way to test them or anything like that, but they both kind of come back up. So I'm gonna probably take them both apart and see what's going on with these two and see if there's anything defective with these two. Cause if I can sell these, these are going for like use like 400 a piece. So if there's not actually anything wrong with these, um, you know, I prefer to just sell them and make some money back. But again, if I'm hoping there's something wrong with these because then at least that is a justifiable purchase. So <laughs> anywho, these have lifetime warranty. These are brand new. Let's go ahead and slap these inside. We also have some brand new screws and some brand new bars. So uh, yeah, this is gonna be really satisfying. So just like that guys, both of the actuators are in the car. Let's go ahead and just reconnect everything. And then I'm probably gonna start taking apart the other two. So now that we got the two arms back on there, the throttle actually is back on there, everything's bolted up properly. Now before actually installing everything else, I do wanna just double make sure that the throttle actuaries are actually the issue. So if it's not, we can actually go ahead and just check all the wires, double check everything. But for now, let's just go ahead and take these two apart and just see like, hey, is there a broken gear or not? Because uh, <laughs> what's going on here? All right, so first things first, as soon as I opened this thing, this little plastic kind of just came out. Not really sure what this is exactly, but let's just go ahead and just turn this upside down and see if anything falls outside of it. So looking more into this one, other than this little thing that actually came out of it, which I don't know if that's an actual issue or not, you guys can see right over here on these two teeth that it looks like something's a little off. What I mean by a little off, I mean like kind of looks like it's been chipped just a little bit. Um, but putting this gear in here, it, it is functioning still. I just don't know if that will cause the car not to fully turn on. Not really too sure exactly. It does look like it's still working. But what I didn't know is that there's an actual logic board uh, piece of this. So this honestly could be damaged as well. I don't even know how to look at these. So for any of you guys, who are professionals at looking at logic boards. If you guys can take a screenshot and let me know. This looks perfectly fine to me. I don't see anything like, you know, super weird or anything. But yeah, let's just go ahead and put this back together and check out the other one. So the exact same thing came out of this one. I'm not really too sure what this is exactly. Like, guys, let me know what this is. But basically this little thing here came out of both of them. I don't know if it came out of from the outside, the inside, uh, but looking inside of this one, if I go ahead and pop out this gear, right over here, you guys can see there's a lot of wear over here, but I feel like that's kind of normal just because of where this kind of touches with it. But honestly, guys, like I said, it does look normal and I'm not exactly too sure what's wrong with these. Now, I mean, honestly, getting a rebuild kit for one of these doesn't seem that difficult. I mean, that could have been an option. I thought it was a lot more difficult to get into these, uh, but I mean, I don't know, I don't know. I'm definitely not gonna be throwing these out. I'm definitely do a lot more research. If I can rebuild these, uh, why not? If I can sell them uh, and they're worth something, why not? This also right over here looks perfectly normal. I'm not really seeing any issues. So uh, yeah, again, if you guys have any information about actuators and you guys are like professionals, let me know down below. But um, for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and just reassemble this. Now, honestly, I don't really like starting up the car without the, at least the plenum on there. So let's just go ahead and slap on the plenum. I'm not gonna go ahead and put in the intake just yet, but as long as we get the plenum in there so we can get everything connected properly and make sure it doesn't, you know, bog or act weird because something's unplugged because this this is supposed to be plugged into it this is supposed to be plugged into it and that hose back there is supposed to be plugged into the plenum so definitely some things that need to be reconnected so let's just go ahead put in the plenum get that back installed that's gonna be such a pain i hate working on plenums but once we actually get that sorted in i think it should be good to go So now that everything assembled, guys, it is literally the moment of truth. It is definitely the moment of truth. We got the keys. Will it start? Oh my God, guys. Imagine this doesn't fix it. <laughs> oh my God, that's so much money. All right, now that we're in the inside of the car, guys, moment of truth. All right, let's just first see if there's even power to this car. Okay, there is power. Please God. Three, two, one. Oh, there's just no way. There is just no way. Oh, <laughs> yo, I think my throttle actuators were good, guys. And that could have been a 2017 and a 2020 throttle actuator. I just went ahead and bought brand new throttle actuators. At least we have brand new throttle actuators, but I'm not gonna lie. What is going on with my car? It's saying it has a quarter tank. Do you guys think it's possibly gas? Let's just go ahead and put some gas in the car, guys, and it, it might just be that. Let me go actually see if the, if the fuel pump primes. Okay, I do hear some clicking going on in the back, so it is saying that we have a quarter tank. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I have a little bit of gas put in the car, and that might help. Now, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know if I want it to be just gas. <laughs> <laughs> but I want it to be just gas so this thing will start up. But if it's but if it is gas, like I just I just dropped fourteen hundred dollars, guys, on a in a situation that would have cost me about three dollars to fill up. So oh, 
Oh, okay. All right, moment of truth, guys. Okay, still doesn't want to start, though. All right. All right, let's just go ahead and run the codes and see what's going on with this car. That, that's the thing about a special custom build like this, guys. Anything custom, you're gonna run into issues and I'm wondering why it doesn't wanna start. All right, guys, so after giving it a few startups, unfortunately, it still doesn't wanna start. The only issues that keep coming back is uh, the first off, the brake pad wear, plausibility front axle, react immediately. Now, what I'm thinking, because the car did start up before we actually did the wheels and brakes, there is a possibility that the brake system is causing the car not to start up because basically it does not want us to drive off and then we have no brakes. It's just a small chance, but it's a possibility because the other fault is saying caution vehicle may roll back. So the only two red faults we have have to do with the brake system and coming back to the codes, it's saying it's a brake sensor right over here. So I think the thing we're gonna go ahead and do is that we actually got the sensors in, which is perfect timing. Let's go and replace those brake sensors and see, does the brake sensors really prevent a car from starting up if they're completely shot? Maybe, maybe it's a safety thing. I have no idea. Guys, legit so confused, but I'm gonna go ahead and just install this because it really could be a possibility. I mean, we gotta get it done anyway, so mine as well. guys so i just reset the front sensors the rear sensors those actually went through and i no longer have a brake light or any other lights in terms of brakes on the system here if i actually let down the e-brake the brake light goes away too which is oh, dang this, this e-brake is on tough e-brake man here's all that sorted now moment of truth does the brakes really prevent a car from starting i swear if it does i mean i'd be happy because it's a simple fix but ah oh, so close guys So I'm getting something on the dash right now. Start off assistant inactive. So it looks like the car is preventing itself from turning on. Like something is like some kind of fail safe is going on right here. Don't know exactly what it is, but hopefully we can figure it out later today. This is quite upsetting, I'm not gonna lie. Hey, but at least we replaced our brake pads. That's not bad. And we replaced our actuators. That's not bad either. So regardless, it made us do things that we need to do. So we got it done. I wanna drive. <laughs> I just wanna drive it. <laughs> so I read it on the forums that someone said there's a possibility there could be a wiring issue. So I went ahead and just disconnected the DME, reconnected it, started it up, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try that again, but uh, watch what happens. finally started up and all I did was unplug the DME and replug it in so I don't know what that means exactly and uh, we do have a service engine light we do have an increased emissions light which is not really good either so we need to figure out what those are but I mean it's running it's bogging I mean it's not too shabby So I noticed we had a small coolant leak coming from the center and then I accidentally created a bigger coolant leak by pretty much trying to bleed the system while the car was running and then I accidentally snapped it right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to extract that screw so I don't have to replace this entire expansion tank. I mean, the good news is we got the car started. It wasn't because of the actuators, but now it's like, why didn't it start in the first place? Was it really just because I need to unplug it and plug it back in? It's just a little bit weird for me. I like to know the actual issue so I don't have to like wake up one morning, try to start up the car and just won't start. So um, yeah, that's. It's a little weird, but hopefully, hopefully at least all those other codes go away. If all those codes go away and they're not sitting in the background, then I'm not too worried about it. But if the codes are sitting there in the background, that means it can happen at any minute. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and try to extract this thing first. Fingers crossed, it'll come out easy. So unfortunately, we did just lose an expansion tank. So uh, let's just go ahead and jack up the car and see where that second coolant leak is, mainly because, uh, yeah, we wanna figure out where all the coolant leaks are, get that all sorted so we get a new expansion tank. We could just go ahead and slap that in there. This is kinda like one of those things that I'm honestly expecting bad things to start happening, mainly because like we got everything together, but now is everything gonna work together and work properly? There's gonna be a lot of little things we're gonna have to get sorted. That expansion tank was just a super unfortunate coincidence, but I'm pretty sure I can head to BMA and I'm sure they have an expansion tank for like 45 bucks so this will come up on ebay and they're going for like 45 dollars all day for those expansion takes those are pretty cheap for the whole thing so i'm probably just not going to buy just the bolt from bmw i would honestly just get the bolt from bmw but it's not coming out so uh, it is what it is
And just like that, guys, we got a new expansion tank from BMA European. Shout out to them. I think I got this thing for like $30, so that is a huge cop. Let's go ahead and head home and get this thing installed. I was thinking about it on the way back here, how I could actually make some money. And considering that the car started before with no issues, and then all of a sudden, uh, you know, we fixed the issue because of the whole DME situation. All I did was literally unplug it and plug it back in. All of a sudden, now we have, you know, it's a working car. But the good news is, like, I know for sure, for sure, now we have brand new actuators at 120,000 miles. So, like, I know for sure, for sure, we never have to worry about actuators again. Even though these are used, and one of them looks like it's been literally just replaced recently, I'll at least be able to make some of my money on these back. The OEM ones do cost more than the OE one. So uh, long story short, if anyone needs some actuators, hit me up because honestly, when I took them apart, they look perfectly fine. You guys saw that I had no metal shards or anything inside of them. So yeah, I mean, uh, let's go ahead and just redirect our focus, make another mess, a coolant mess, and uh, get this bad boy installed. <laughs> So I pretty much just topped this off with some distilled water. Now that we're good to go, uh, everything's reconnected. I mean, moment of truth, I even connected the temperature air sensor. So we shouldn't have any lights on the dash in terms of the check engine. So theoretically, no check engine light, no airbag light, uh, no seatbelt light, no brake light. I mean, th th I, we just have a TPMS light at this point, which is kind of impressive considering how this car um, <laughs> doesn't look so good right now. So without further ado, for the moment of truth, can we actually start this car, put it in gear, put it in reverse, and actually back it outside the garage? Uh, that would be pretty insane. Cause I back this thing up a little bit let it run uh jack it up see where that coolant leak is fix that up real quick and then once we do that i want to start assembling some of this front end right here because uh i think it's about time we can start slapping on the fenders the headlights the side skirts i don't know about the front bumper just yet because i feel like i have to take that off to lower onto the trailer but at least the headlights and fenders i'm going to try to get that done and possibly the side skirt so without further ado let's go ahead and start her up hopefully she starts and back her out The good thing is it is running, but it's making a super weird sound. I don't think the power steering is working because the steering is super heavy. So let's go ahead, pop the hood and see if we can top off the power steering. All right, guys, so I did just find a slight coolant leak right over here in this hose that actually connects to the top of the coolant expansion tank. Uh, so I do need to figure out why that's leaking. It is fully in there. Maybe it's cracked. I need to figure that out real quick. I'll get back to you on a sec. So after bleeding the expansion tank, I'm not actually seeing any more leaks. This is obviously when I actually replaced the expansion tank, but everything looks pretty good right now. So we have brake fluids in the car, so that is a check. We have coolant, we have oil, and we have power steering. So the last thing we need is honestly AC to make sure our entire system is working properly. Before we're actually assembling the front end of this car. So the thing I want to test now is, does our AC work? Let's go ahead and slap this inside and see if it works. Guys, our entire AC system is graving the Navy. It is working. That thing sounds so, so, so good. Now, I mean, unfortunately, we're gonna have to put back on the muffler to get this thing certified because I want this to become a legal California car, which is only gonna increase the value of it even some more. I care about what my cars are worth and it's gonna make it feel more of like a, like a legal E91 M3 and it's gonna just add more value to it. Do not worry, guys. Again, I'm not selling this car. I just like my stuff actually having value. That's why when you guys build your guys' cars, you don't want it to look janky because I kind of depreciate appreciates the value. If your car looks like a million bucks, it just feels good, it feels amazing. And especially if I can make this thing 100% legal here in California and drive it with no sweats, it's gonna be absolutely amazing. Now I'm not gonna lie, everything's been pretty solid here. I, I am still seeing a little bit of dripping down there. Um, I don't know if that's just extra coolant that I went onto the pan and is dripping down. Um, that will diagnose later. As for now, everything does look really good, so I'm not really too worried about it. Let's go ahead and try to bring one of the fenders and try to knock it out and then the other fender, uh, and then possibly even the headlights. Like We'll see if we're gonna get the headlights done, but I I think the primary thing is get those two fenders on there. So 
So unfortunately guys, I just ran into an issue that uh, is kind of a big deal, honestly. So the M3 fenders apparently don't just bolt up to a standard wagon or even a standard 325, 335 sedan. An M3 fender is only dedicated for M3s. I just went to the backyard to take some pictures and as you guys can see, these don't line up exactly. So you guys can see that this is kind of like right there and this one's right over here. Now it's not that far off, but unfortunately it's far off enough. I could honestly just hammer this back more and it could line up with that one. But then the second one right over here, we don't even have a second one right over here. So we definitely have to take that off and probably weld it on. And this last one down over here is not angled like this one. This one is definitely different. And if you guys see from this picture, the welds of the door, it's right beneath the welds of the door. This one, um, it's not exactly beneath the welds of the door, unfortunately. I'm gonna go ahead and do some more research on this see the easiest way to actually get this fender to go on If there's no easy way we might have to just drill these out and get them off the m3 It's a good thing. I haven't junked the m3 so far And I also found the two mounting points on the bottom are not even the same So it's supposed to be a little bracket that comes out over here and over here on the m3 It's not on here I actually went ahead and just adjusted this one upwards and I actually bent this one backwards to where the fender lines up with that That screw hole is gonna go in that screw hole is gonna go in and also these are gonna bolt it all on Technically, I don't really need those two right there, but I kind of want them just to make sure the fender's on there as sturdy as possible. So I'm gonna probably go ahead, put the wheel back on the car, drive it in the garage, get that thing welded up. And then I, if, as long as I can get it all sorted perfectly, I'll show you guys what I'm gonna be doing to the other side. I'm just gonna try to just keep mocking on this one until I can get this fender on here perfectly. And welcome back to day two, guys. Now I know, I know I should have uploaded yesterday. That should be the schedule, especially for December. But unfortunately, I kept on running to issues last night and I was like, you know what? I just need to sleep on it, do some research, figure out the best way to do this. And long story short, we finally got the fender on there with no place. As you guys can see, when I hit over here, it's not moving. When I hit in the center, it's not moving. When I hit on the bottom, it's not moving. When I pull on it, it's not moving. So uh, basically what I went ahead and did is actually weld the factory bracket right there, the factory bracket over here, and also the factory bracket down here. The two down here, I actually got them both welded in, but they didn't honestly withstand. Once I actually put the bolts in there, it just snapped right off. So unfortunately, I don't think there's enough metal um, from the piece that I, I was able to take off the other car. So long story short, I pretty much put a rivet, a washer, and a nut, and it held it in place right over here perfectly. That's not an issue, especially for a custom car like this. Um, there's gonna be at least a thing or two they're gonna have to do that's a little bit aftermarket, but that honestly is more than good enough. The fender is fully flush to the door, which I'm really happy about. The only thing is that absolutely perfect is this line and this line. I just have to pretty much raise the fender a little bit, but on this side, we have the washer tank, and it's such a pain in the butt to get to. I didn't notice that until everything was pretty much bolted up. We're gonna have to remove this anyways for paint when the time comes, so uh, there's no point to keep playing with this. This is fine, at least we're able to kind of check the gaps and everything. If you guys look over here uh, where the hood meets the fender, it looks really, really, really good. I went ahead and played with the hood as well. Everything over here is looking really factory, really nice. I'm super happy and everything is kind of lining up. The gap from top to bottom is, uh, it's not perfect, but it's really good. It's really good. I'm assuming this gap is gonna open up a little bit when we actually bring up the fender a little bit so these lines can actually match up. So once you actually bring this up, this should at least open up a little bit and it'll match this gap right over here. So that is not an issue. I'm just super happy we finally have a fender on the car here. I didn't really show you guys how I put on this fender because I was pretty much testing a bunch of different methods and I was just trying to see what works and what doesn't work and uh, I finally found something. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what I did on this side to the other side and get that other fender on there. So at least the wagon from both sides can be recognized as an M3, finally. Also, we need to test out the lights once both fenders are on there. I'm hoping both of the wiring to the lights are good and everything's gonna be working perfectly. And I'm not gonna lie guys, these Apex wheels, check out this fitment. <laughs> We definitely do need to lower it some more, but again, I want to keep it as raised up as possible so we can actually get this thing on the trailer, off a trailer, on a trailer, off a trailer, um, to take it to the shops that we need to to get everything dialed in, like the exhaust, the paint, stuff like that. So for now, this height is fine. The fitment is absolutely beautiful. Super happy the fact that we actually got to rock some Apex wheels on this car, some KWs, and these M3 fenders just look so good with this girth. I know a lot of guys have been hitting me up saying, Nor, are you gonna actually replace the quarter panels? Yes, I definitely plan to do so. I'm hoping to do it with another fellow YouTuber. If not, I'm probably gonna just do it locally. We just trying to figure out the best time for something like this. I can say that I'm able to replace a quarter panel. I'll probably do it on like a cheaper car, a car that like, you know, I don't really care what happens. It's a flip or whatever. Kind of like if you guys know what I mean, like a car to practice on. This is not a car to practice on. This is a car I want to take to show events and things like that. So I need this car to be absolutely perfect. So that is the reason I'm not doing the quarter panels myself on this one. But without further ado, let's just go ahead and hop into the other side and finally get that other fender installed. <laughs>
before I show you guys the results with the power of editing, let me go ahead and just clean up. And moments later, guys, finally clean up the garage and check out this fender, guys. Look at this fitment. It looks absolutely amazing over here. Um, I even got this line perfect right over here on this side. Um, got pretty much everything. The, the two things that I actually welded on this side ended up being perfect, didn't fall off because I cut them a little bigger on this side. I was able to use the factory screws to actually get that in there. Uh, the gap is a little tight over here. Um, gets a little bit bigger down here, so I can adjust the bottom a little more uh, down the road. Not a big deal. But it looks like this side marker is working. Working, and this side marker is working as well. So honestly guys, <laughs> This just looks absolutely crazy. I love how the silver's all really coming together. Once you actually get the two headlights on there, the front bumper, the wheel guards, and everything else to the front end of this car, the whole front end's gonna be completely silver, which is gonna look so, so, so sick. I really want to title this video the first drive with the E91 M3, but I kinda wanna save that title for the day that we actually get the side mirrors on there, the front headlights on there, and actually get some moving permits, mainly because I don't wanna just drive down the block and be stressed that a cop might be coming down here, or even just like drive anywhere without actual insurance on this car and moving permits or moving tags. I do want at least get the side mirrors on there and the headlights on this to where we can't actually get pulled over for something stupid there's actually one more thing i need to get done to this car to actually be able to drive it without worrying whatsoever with this car and that is gonna have to be the exhaust the exhaust is kind of exiting in the middle of the car right there and that's gonna cause some heat damage to the car if i don't actually get that sorted properly so other than the mirrors and the front headlights i do want to get the exhaust on there i'm gonna probably try to book an appointment for that in like the next day or two and uh, try to put like a half conversion bumper on the rear that would probably be in the next video so i'm gonna try to figure out this whole rerun situation put on an m3 style bumper obviously we don't have the quarter panels done but just kind of like a mock-up just so at least the exhaust we, we can line it up at the exhaust shop because without a bumper you can't really line up the exhaust the way you want it so with the bumper at least you can do some test fitting and figure out exactly where you want the exhaust the exhaust is actually going to help us line up the bumper when we actually try to combine two bumpers and line everything up so that is actually like knocking out two birds in one stone not only is it going to help us drive the car and able to like comfortably drive the car but at the same time help us line up the bumper once we get that fully converted but yeah guys this thing is looking so 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 good Good. this is a real m3 as of this point and uh, i mean honestly guys there's still so much to do i'm actually going to cut off the video right now and start working on the rear end of this car so i can get you guys out a video asap so if this video is kind of shorter than the rest of them it's mainly because um, i want to start working on this rear end try to get the exhaust on you and everything in a separate video and then get that out to you guys and then honestly i'm gonna try to just start knocking things out the next video after that's probably gonna be the headlights the bumper um side skirts and just try to get this thing fully complete and drivable possibly even the side mirrors um all that good stuff so if you guys are excited for the e91 m3 build make sure to smash that like button but without further ado guys that is gonna have to conclude the video all of y'all so much remember to stay humble i'll see y'all in the next one peace out